Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And let me thank you immensely for just sitting here and staring at you. Um, and of course, my heart warms and I feel extremely happy that you were placed in a position to, to stay the house this morning. Um, if your smile and your grace, I thank God for that responsibility that you are charged with this morning. And of course, need to say thanks for the Prime Minister and leadership of this government to see the, the wisdom in having a Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I do rise to support this motion that is before us the borrowing of such an important amount. And of course, I, I think of it in the context of borrowing for our people, borrowing for educating and moving our people forward. Mr. Speaker, my contribution will be brief, but I want to capture it from the basis of what I learned at church from a basic instruction from Solomon in Proverbs 22 verse 6 and it reads that train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. Of course most times when theologians speak about training they probably would be thinking of the values of seeking God which is also applicable or the context of actually seeking God wisdom but also in those days training up, a, training up a child also meant improving their abilities and talents and while today in our world that we do not arrange training like it happened long ago even in our back in the 60s 70s when I grew up you could have gone to a tailor or a, a carpenter or, or, or to a mechanic and learn the trade Today, these things are institutionalized, where you must attend some arranged way of training. And therefore, the amount being placed, or the amount being provided under this motion, is to ensure that we continue to invest in our people. Mr. Speaker, there's a saying that I learned at primary school, speak the truth, and you must speak it always, cause it what it be. And this morning, I just want to remind you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that some time ago when I was in opposition, I had the occasion to speak with a member from the other side. And I was surprised as a, at a statement that was made on the matter of youth unemployment. And the member indicated that one of the problems with youth unemployment is because we invested this country in universal secondary school education. That statement was made. I remained quiet, but a deputy permanent secretary who was present met me days after and said to me, I said to him, did you listen to the statement made? And he said, but I was surprised you said nothing. I was shocked that a parliamentarian or member of government indicated that the issue with youth unemployment is because we had invested in universal secondary school education. The argument was being made that because children had the opportunity to go to secondary school education, they were not interested in learning skills. And I reflected on it. I reflected on it and I asked the then Deputy Prime Minister, so because I want to be a carpenter, that I should not understand Pythagoras' theorem. That the square root of three squared plus four squared is equal to five. And that you can square the corner of a house by using measurement only. Pythagoras' theorem can allow you to square up a house. Because Pythagoras show you that a squared plus b squared is equal to c. I ask myself, why would someone believe that universal, universal education, secondary school education, would limit the abilities of persons? So what we have found ourselves in is an issue that is global, regional, where 
a lot of the economic dyna dynamics has allowed persons to find themselves unemployed, particularly our youth. And this investment of our young people would allow persons to become employable, would provide opportunities, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, this has been in the cont it is, is, is happening when you, you take into consideration the focus that this government has on the youth. And we came up with the idea of the youth economy. We are thinking of the young people of this country in a way that has not happened in, in the past. We are not just giving lip service, but the youth economy. Why would you think of the youth economy? Because we are concerned about unemployment and we want to give opportunities to young people. But how do they take opportunities when you set up the youth economy? By providing training to them. Because, yes, you have a CXC in mass, and of course, I know at some point in time, this, the Minister of Education, will provide support and will speak to how we are engineering the educational system. But, of course, we will see how we will link all of these things coming together. So, Mr. Speaker, there is a big difference in what has happened in the past and what we're trying to do. The trajectory is important where we are heading. So, of course, yes, we will equip our young people with abilities so that they can seek, they can be inno innovative. And we are starting to see a lot of this happening. A lot of the young persons I am seeing coming to me in my constituency are looking for small business opportunities. They are also interested in providing training. Even when they had their dropout experience at secondary school, they are willing to take up the opportunities if presented to them. And I usually applaud those persons and I go out of my way and say to them, any person, who, whether you are UW, SLP, you are interested in continuing your education at this time, I will find on the CDP to help you. As a matter of fact, I think I may have used more of the resources towards investing in young people to provide them with opportunities. We understand that there is a difference between education and concrete. There is a difference between education and asphalt concrete or Portland concrete. You understand? Concrete with a hurricane and with the turbulence of water can be washed away. Of course, and if we have to remove everybody from this country because it's damaged, because there's no concrete to drive on, you can leave this country, get on a boat, get on a flight, and live with your education. That is why we invest in our people. That is how you create resilience of a population. That is, <laughs> yes, that is how you create hope for the future. That is how you ensure that there is a greater tomorrow. So, of course, Mr. Speaker, this country believes that there is a fundamental difference between education and concrete. And, of course, and while we understand that some persons will complain about the state of roads, it is not today, two and a half years in power, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, one would ask, why are the roads in such a condition? And when you take the ex exponential degradation of our roads, this thing did not happen overnight. Roads do not just this a, a, a damage instantly because there's a new government in power. There's a chemical reaction that takes time and is progressive until you find the roads in this condition. But it seems as if we are the ones responsible. No, we accept the responsibility because we are in power. But of course, we are taking our time and we'll correct it. But we will not leave our young people education behind. And that is why we are investing every cent we can strategically to ensure that there is a better tomorrow for our people. Mr. Speaker, I really want to emphasize the point that while persons speak about crime and violence, and of course as if some persons have become crime experts, we are not crime experts. The police are. What we are concerned about is our young people. We are concerned about them in terms of their welfare. We are concerned about them in terms of providing educational opportunities. We are concerned about them in every aspect of their life. While the police will be equipped with their resources to do their work, 
this cabinet will continue to find resources to invest and provide opportunities for our people. So, Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this important borrowing, and the funds I know is in the hands of an able Minister of Education. I know that the, the cabinet of ministers that rally around that borrowing is actually representing every sector that is important. I support and I applaud all cabinet ministers this morning in this chamber for housing support for the ability to strengthen our roads, our Minister of, 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 of Agriculture, you know, in providing the support that is needed, the Minister of Education, Tourism, and our dear Prime Minister this morning. May God bless our effort as we continue to use the resources of the state to push our population forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.